In this video, we're going to discuss the good old Hess's Law straight from general chemistry. So we can remind ourselves that enthalpy, H, is a state function. So it doesn't matter how we get from point A to point B. All that matters is what are the state at point A and point B. And the difference in enthalpy is just the difference in enthalpy between those two states. It doesn't matter which kind of straight path or a zigzag path or a crazy roundabout way we took to get there. If we know the endpoints of a process, then we can calculate the enthalpy from the difference in enthalpy at each of those two states. So therefore, we can make the following statement that if we have some reaction and it's composed of a series of small reactions, so the enthalpy of the reaction for the total net reaction that's just going to be the sum over all the steps of the enthalpy of reaction for the individual reactions, for reaction I, all the way up to the number of reactions which compose our total reaction. So let's do a quick example here. Let's look at, let's say we have H2 gas plus half a mole of O2 gas and that goes and forms liquid water, H2O liquid. So for this process, delta R of reaction is going to equal minus 285.8 kilojoules. And if we say the standard molar reaction, that'll be 200, minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Then let's also say we have the reaction H2O liquid plus another one half moles of oxygen is going to give us final result H2O2 liquid hydrogen peroxide and the enthalpy of reaction for that reaction is going to be a positive 98.0 kilojoules per mole ah, kind of getting bunched up there let's see kilojoules per mole Okay, molar quantities for each. Uh, we can see that these reactions, if we sum up the two of them here, we get one half plus one half gives us one. This minus this cancel out because you have a reactant here and a product there. So what we're net left with in the net is going to be H2 gas plus O2 gas, one half plus one half, giving us just one going to hydrogen peroxide as a liquid. So what is the enthalpy of reaction for this net reaction here that we are not given? Well, this is, works the exact same way it did in general chemistry. We just have a lot more background for why this is true now. We just take the enthalpy of each individual reaction, which sums up to this net reaction, and our final enthalpy is just going to be the sum of these two numbers minus 187.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and it also follows because of this, if we have a reaction and we complete that reaction, there's some enthalpy change. Then if we go backwards, we end up at the original state. So if we take this, uh, if we take this hydrogen and oxygen, make hydrogen peroxide, that is minus 187.8. Then if we take hydrogen peroxide, push it back to its elements, H2 and O2, then we ended up with what we started with. So since enthalpy is a state function, we started and ended at the same place. So if we start and end at the same place, the enthalpy change has to be zero for that total process. So the enthalpy of a reverse reaction has to be the opposite of the enthalpy of a forward reaction. So we know that the enthalpy of reaction for the forward reaction equals the minus enthalpy of reaction for the reverse reaction. And that's pretty much true by definition by the fact that H is a state function and H of reaction is still a state function. And this would be true whether or not we are using the standard case or not. 